Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this month's non-farm payrolls webinar with me, Michael Hewson, uh, here in London, and my colleague over in Toronto, Colin Szyzynski. Good afternoon, we everyone. Good afternoon, and we, the two of us, will be help, helping you to navigate the turbulent waters of the October non-farm payrolls report. And really, I think the expectation has been, let's get this risk warning out of the way first, because I think before we sort of really get started into the guts of it, let, let's, 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 um, let's keep our compliance departments happy, shall we, Colin? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've got to do that and make sure that uh, they're all um, they're all on board and uh, we're all singing from the same. Sh all right, I'm being asked, are you going to tell us when to start buying and selling? Short answer to that is no, um, because we are not um, allowed to give financial advice. So if you're looking for when to when to start buying and when to start selling, I'm afraid this is the wrong place to be. We are not allowed by regulation to give trade recommendations it's beyond our regulatory remit so um, I'm sorry about that we can sort of talk about general direction we can talk about support and resistance levels we can talk about um, where we think the market may or may not be going in the wake of the payrolls numbers but what we cannot do is give you trading advice um, we can educate you but we cannot tell you buy here sell here stop loss here take profit here it's beyond our purview so sorry about that anyway um moving swiftly on so yeah basically the expectation is for non-farm payrolls u.s non-farm payrolls to come in this is the bloomberg at 235 235,000 new jobs to be added in october now, I put out a note this morning suggesting that that might be slightly conservative. And the reason I think that could be slightly conservative is um, basically we've had some really good weekly jobless claims coming at a 14-year low in October at 266, and they've been regularly below 300,000 every week in October. We saw some very positive ISM employment components from not only the manufacturing sector but also the services sector and we saw a fairly positive ADP number. Now let's quickly look at my spreadsheet here because this is basically the ADP numbers that we've seen over the course of the last three or four months. Now one thing that was actually did strike me on Wednesday's ADP numbers, we had a very sharp downward revision to the August number from 202,000 to 162. So that sort of brings it more in line with the non-farms, which was at 180 for August. And originally, you know, that was that was very much an outperformer, and we, we've we've come back into line to that. 248 September, fairly positive. If we look at where it was a year ago, um, it was around about 164, I believe. Yeah, 164. So the slowdown happened a little bit later. So going into the end of the year, this, this year looks like it could probably be the best jobs growth in the U.S. for quite some time. I think it's in about 13, 14 years, isn't it, Colin? I think I was reading somewhere. It's certainly a, a very, very positive year for jobs. So Absolutely. It's been very, very strong in the United States. We're seeing consistently... Uh, plus 200,000 prints, and yes, we had the one in August, but other than that, it's been very, very solidly above 200 for, for almost six months now. So that's really, uh, really positive for the U.S. and uh, and great momentum for their uh, their economy. Apart from the August one, which came in at 180, but pretty much January was on summer time. I mean, yeah, sometimes you get a bit of a slowdown, and that certainly yeah. has been reflected. So I'm expecting 275. Um, now I could end up with egg all over my face with respect to that, but that's basically what I said on Bloomberg TV this morning. 275 is what I'm expecting on non-farms. Sh should be fairly positive. The big question is, what does that mean for the US dollar? Are the markets, is that already priced in? What's your view, Colin? Um, uh, first of all, I just wanted to mention my expectation was a slightly more, pretty close to yours, a little more conservative. I factor in the uh, revision. I figured in a 10,000 upward revision to last month, uh, mm -hmm. particularly bouncing back from October and, and 240. So that would be 
combined around 250. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit above the street as well. So I do think we'll see a positive report. My thinking is the street's probably priced in something in between 200 and 250. I think really you'd have to see probably above say 260 to really, for people to really think it's a, a, bit, a positive surprise and, and below 200 for a real negative surprise. Okay. Does that sound reasonable to you? It sounds reasonable to me. I mean, the the thing is, the thing with these payroll numbers is you have to basically factor in a variance, and and the window is 180 to 300. So, yeah. for me, what's most important is the average hourly earnings number down here. If this starts to edge higher, then the the potential for a red Fed red red Fed Fed rate hike, easy for me to say, obviously comes in quite substantially, and that would be dollar positive. The thing we've seen at the moment, and I think the thing that worries me a little bit about the U.S. economy is the fact that participation rate is still at 35-year lows, and that's at 62.7. So what we're seeing is the unemployment rate coming down uh, at the same time as the participation rate, which makes me doubt the resilience of the U.S. recovery. And, and the biggest thing is these new jobs, they're fairly low-paid jobs. So even though we're seeing fairly positive jobs growth, it's probably at the lower end of the wage scale, which means that, which would explain why retail sales um, continues to underperform, and that's coming out next week. So certainly worth keeping an eye on the actual numbers themselves. But anything, anything between, I would suggest, 225 and 255 or 265 is probably going to be fairly neutral. Anything above 275 is going to be dollar positive. Anything below 200 will be dollar negative. So let's pull this out of the way and let's look at some of the charts because I'm guessing, ladies and gents, you want to see where the key levels are on the various indexes. What I wanted to start with, if you don't mind, Colin, is the small cap. Certainly. It's a great place because, to start. Because the small cap is looking very, very overbought. Let's just get rid of that because that's broken now. For me, the key level remains the September highs, just above 1180. Now, we've seen a very aggressive bounce back in U.S. markets over the, since the lows in October. The S&P is up nearly 12%, as is the Dow Jones. So the question I'm asking is how much of this recovery is priced in? The Fed was quite hawkish last week, which surprised me somewhat. And that really suggests, you know, that there is concerns, and you mentioned it earlier, about the strength of the dollar and how that will filter through into S&P 500 company earnings over the course of the next few, over the next few months. But for now, if we look at the S&P, we can see, well, I mean, look at that. I mean, that's just absolutely incredible when you look at that. So at the moment, I think the next, if, if it's a bad number, or if it's a stock negative number, then obviously the support level is going to be 2020. Would you go along with that? Yes, that sounds perfectly reasonable. That uh, that breakout point, it was certainly would you'd expect for it to come in as uh, as new resistance. And if that got broken, your next support would be a 2,000, the round number. And you've got that little uh, candle earlier in the week that bounced straight off of it. That one there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, so 2000. that's that's looking about right. But that's pretty over, getting pretty overbought on the stochastics too, even though it hasn't rolled down yet. No, it hasn't rolled down, and that's that's the thing with the stochastic. Even though it looks overbought, because even though it looks overbought, doesn't mean that it can't carry on going up. So certainly the next level on the S&P is 2040. So that's that's the that's the next level I'm looking at. But as I said, I think you made a very good analogy with respect to the Dow and uh, the S&P. Basically, the generals and the officers are moving ahead, but the actual cavalry is lagging behind in terms uh, yes, of the the small caps. Uh, yeah, absolutely. When you're looking at the markets, you want to see a broad based uh, across a wide number of stocks because when you look, there's only 30 stocks in the Dow. There's only 500 stocks in the S&P, particularly in the Dow. You only have to move three or four stocks to move the Dow. That, that's not very much relative to the, the thousands of stocks that are, are available out there. So when you see the, 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 the Dow and, and even to a certain extent the S&P, which at least is, is 500 companies, but, but still relatively narrow, um, it's suggesting a concentration of bullish capital into a small number of companies. And, and when you look at the, the, the market reactions to uh, the, some of the earnings reports, it's been you know, fairly positive towards the industrials. But if you look at tech, we've had uh, quite a few big takedowns on, on some big names, whether it was started with Netflix and Twitter and, and Facebook and, and, and a number of others. So uh, there, it hasn't been all, uh, even earnings season hasn't been 100% uh, full speed ahead either. And we can see it in the NASDAQ that's leveling off here. 
Yeah, it is. Even and that hasn't confirmed, and that's the momentum plays. I mean, if we look at this here, this the Nasdaq is stuck between these two lines here. There. So that's a nice little channel there in the Nasdaq, or a rectangle, between 41.86, or there or thereabouts, and 41.24. So I would be surprised if we got a break out of this particular range in the NASDAQ. So, you know, certainly from my perspective, um, I, I would probably favor a short position over a long position here, simply because we've tried this level three times and, and, and failed, and this is the four-hour chart. Certainly worth keeping an eye on that little bad boy there. Now, Euro-Dollar, we've seen significant breakouts in both Euro-Dollar, Dollar-Yen, and Cable over the course of the past few days. The key level for me is this 124.50-60 level on euro dollar. We've broken below it, and we've broken below it quite substantially. If we close below it on the week, it really does open up the lows that we saw in 2012 at 120.40. So where we close this week, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be, I think, very, very key in where we go to next. Now, according to CFTC stats, net short positions in euro dollar at the same level they were in mid-2012 when we saw the rally off 120.40. So I would remind you that the euro will remain susceptible to a short squeeze. doesn't mean that you shouldn't be short of it. It's all about the levels. And at current levels, I'm a little bit reluctant to be overly short euro dollar, particularly ahead of a, you know, a non-farm payrolls number. We could go either way. So um, I would certainly look to sell euro strength back to 124.60, 124.70. And the same really applies to cable. We broke a double bottom here at 158.75. Any, any pullback towards 158.75 is probably going to find a little bit of selling interest. Um, and the potential is that we could go to 157.20. Certainly the break of the support level would appear to suggest that stronger dollar still appears to be the way to go, but it's really a question of entry levels once again. So again, it really depends on the numbers and the direction. Dollar yen, that's gone parabolic. I would steer well away from that at current levels. It's not really clear as to which way that's going at the moment. I think it's going to 120 over the long term, but certainly given the range that we saw yesterday when it traded 115.52, 114, it's probably a little bit too rich for my blood at the moment, certainly at these levels. It's at the top end of its recent range. It doesn't mean that we can't go higher. The, the high was 52 yesterday. We're about 20 points away from that now, and we're 1 minute 46 seconds away from payrolls. Let's quickly look at dollar CAD for all our Canadian clients. This is a one, this is a one year chart, and we can see that the trend is definitely up on that. Um, certainly no evidence that um, we're not going to see Canada get weaker, and certainly I think the expectation is a net loss of 5,000 jobs. Is that right? Yes, and uh, we had a huge increase in Canada last month of 74,000 jobs, so a retrenchment the following month after a big month is, is what usually happens. It's very common. The street's looking at, uh, at a loss of 5,000. I'm thinking a loss of 20, just in a normal, in a normal retrenchment correction. So basically you're seeing if, if that comes in worse than expected, you think dollar cash go 115? That certainly could at that, uh, this point, particularly if the U.S. dollar strengthens. Yeah. So, what, what, to get to 115, we need a good, we need a positive payrolls, U.S. payrolls, and a negative Canada one. It'll be a double whammy. Yeah. In essence, and looking, looking at dollar Canada, and looking, looking at this particular chart here. Now that we've broken above this 50% retracement level from the highs in 2008, 2009, and the lows, the likelihood is over the course of the next few trading sessions. We could well get to 116.70, so um, you know any pullbacks towards 112.35 are likely to probably be um, fairly well bid. I would suggest. Okay, I would think so. That's a pretty solid trend line coming in there. Yep. Okay, we are. Several times. We are now 15 seconds away from the payrolls numbers. I am going to pull my bloomy over, so that you can see all the numbers. This is the number we're particularly interested in here. Um, 235 and obviously the participant here we go six and a half percent for Canada 214 wow 214, 214 came in low that's We've low 10 8k uh, upward revision and yeah 256 34.5 weekly hours is amazing wow so that's actually negative 
That's dollar, I would say that's mildly dollar negative. We've got U.S. dollar index dropping pretty sharply here on but the news, the, and uh, dollar CAD has gone lower. It's uh, under 114 now. And Gold the unemployment is rate up. Yeah. Dollar. And the, euro dollar is jumping. Okay. So the unemployment rate dropped to 5.8, but the participation rate has gone up to 62.8. So. Yeah, I mean, basically, what I suspected happened has happened. We've had a bit of a rally, a bit of, bit of dollar weakness here, and really it's a question of now looking to see whether or not we get that push back into those resistance areas that I was talking about earlier with respect to euro dollar. So, I would, I mean, I would suggest that we, we could well get a move back to this congestion area here in euro dollar around about 124.60. It's, it's hard to say. I mean, at the moment, um, we've, got, um, we've got fairly good support at yesterday's lows at 123.65. Um, I, would be unduly, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be overly surprised if um, the, the dollar struggles to go much higher over the course of the next few hours. Certainly, the stock markets are treating it fairly positively. The S&P is up three or four points, 2036. Um, the, the Dow is higher. The FTSE, again, it's tr pushing back higher. Let's have a look at the DAX, because this is, where, this is where the divergence really gets you. Look at this DAX chart here. We've broken these resistance levels all the way up, but look where the 200-day moving average is on the DAX. Look at the negative candle here. We've opened on the highs, and we've pretty much gone down for most of the day. So again, overbought struggling to get through the 200-day moving average. So for European stocks, there's certainly significant resistance on the upside. Again, here we've got it on the, the CAC 40, the France 40. A certain amount of resistance through the 50-day, as well as the 200-day. Negative candles. Euro 50. Jump in any time you want, Colin, if you want to jump in. Um, again, it's similar here on the Euro 50. Um, certainly, significant amount of resistance up above near 50 and the 200-day moving averages. So, I think when you're looking at the various equity markets, you're looking at the DAX, you're looking at the CAC current, you're looking at the Euro 50, you have to basically put um, your European hat on and set it aside from your US hat. But I would suggest that it's probably going to struggle. It's, U.S. equity markets are probably going to struggle to get much above 2040 on the S&P and 17,000 and the previous highs. I think the previous highs on the on the Dow. Yeah, Colin? I'm looking here at the uh, at the Dow right now and on the one minute chart, and I'm seeing it got up just below the 17,600, and it's actually started to slip back already. It's back under. It's down to 17,575. So we did get a bit of a spike uh, right on the news, and uh, and now it's starting to drift back. I, I suspect what's happened is that the U.S. markets have probably already. Uh, already had priced in uh, any number between 2 and 250 which is what we got yeah. and uh, even with, with if you took out the small upward revision of 8000 you'd be at 222 which is not that far off from the uh, from the survey so uh, which is 235 yeah, yeah so 232, it was only it was only a small miss really not not mm. huge so i think we probably are seeing that this has already been uh, reasonably priced into the market and we're getting a bit of a uh, pullback now as uh, as people start to recognize that and yeah. uh, similarly, I'm just looking at the U.S. dollar index. It had spiked up, and it's now kind of back to uh, trading slightly below where it was when the news came out. And uh, gold mm. had a big jump up, and it's settling back now around 1150. It's still up from before the news. Mm. And U.S. dollar CAD on the minute chart is sorry, just pulling it over is well down from uh, where the news was. It's still below the uh, 114. So we're definitely seeing, uh, the, certainly the Canadian dollar looks like a big winner this morning on the uh, on the Canadian uh, job surprise, which was really big. Most people, including me, thought it was going to go the other way. So that's a uh, that's some good news for Canada today. Probably see the TSX move up as well, as long as uh, oil and oil steady. So um, you could see a good move up in Canadian stocks too. Yeah, and I think actually looking at that chart, dollar CAD looks probably probably looks like a bit of a sell with the stop loss above the highs two days ago, because that looks like as if it could form a bearish engulfing candle on the daily. Agreed. And if it takes out the lows that we saw on Tuesday, then I certainly think there's potential for a sharp move lower 
on, on this particular one. And if you look at the daily chart, it is starting to get a little bit overbought. That's not to say that we might not get a squeeze all the way back to 114, but a weaker dollar number and a fairly positive Canada number should actually shake out a few dollar longs on the dollar CAD. Uh, yes, it could. I think that the uh, the dollar CAD had, had a pretty good run up, and uh, and certainly was due for a reversal here, which which we're starting to get. Well, let's look at the sentiment indicator on that, Colin. And our top clients, 66 percent, are actually long dollar CAD in terms of position value, and that's up 19 percent on yesterday, which suggests that the cash value of dollar CAD, they were expecting a positive dollar number and a negative calendar number, they haven't got that. And that could cause a little bit of an unwind in client sentiment in terms of the cash position. Um, you know, yes, you, definitely, because this is quite if, a reversal here. You're getting quite a reversal. So, you know, you've got cash, the cash value of long positions in terms of dollar CAD has actually gone up 20% over the past 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And this is real time. And, um, you know, the, that suggests to me the market is slightly long. Uh, yes, question, I would agree. In particular, people had been going more long into the into the news, so I think you're totally right in your assessment. And what's interesting, when we look at the dollar CAD chart down here on the stochastics, you have a lower high on the uh, stochastics, and you were holding just below 80. So that's a negative divergence coming in. You did not confirm this uh, these new highs uh, up above 114 in dollar CAD. So well, uh, you are starting to see. There we go. Thank you, Michael. We are starting to see it, it rolling over, and you're right. This looks like a pretty good bullish engulf. I'm sorry, bearish engulfing pattern uh, here. And you've already taken out the the 114 round number. You've taken out this pr little previous low here. So you could probably see this come back. I think to uh, uh, back towards this Fibonacci level, which is 112. Around that's the uh, yeah. It's around about so you got room for some, some good downside here on this one. Yeah. I'm um, looking. I'm looking at this this level here. I mean, we've got a couple of shadows on those upper candles there, which suggests that there was a little bit of selling interest up there on the initial run up once we've broken above it. So I would suggest that we might see a little bit of buying interest on the downside around about 113.10. But overall, I think um, we could well see a drift lower over the course of the next few trading sessions towards around about 112.35, a little bit of a little bit of dollar weakness. And certainly, we're seeing the position values now starting to unwind on the dollar CAD, went from 67 to 63. So that appears to suggest that we might see that as well. Looking at Euro dollar, let's try to go back below 124. Let's look at the, well, I think that says it all really. The position value, 1% long, 99% short. So that is certainly ripe. And this is our top client's client sentiment. So the, when we look at the client sentiment, and I, I usually like looking at this because these are our most profitable clients over the last three-month period. Okay, So these clients have been our most profitable clients. They're all short, short euros. Um, so that suggests to me that maybe they've got this one wrong, or maybe not wrong, but maybe they'll start to start um, taking some of that cash position back. And um, all the cash is pretty much sitting short euros. And that, for me, makes it very susceptible to a short squeeze back to 124.60, 124.70. I mean, we, we were looking at that earlier. So let's, let's reinforce that by looking, at, looking back at the chart that I drew earlier. And let's go and take it all the way out so you can look at my rationale with respect to this. So we can see that we're very, very overbought, oversold rather, on the weekly stochastics. This is the original move higher from the Draghi lows and the do whatever it takes, 120.40 lows, to the highs earlier this year in May at 139.93. We've broken below um, 124.60, which is a 78.6 Fibonacci retracement level of the entire up move. Why 78.6? Um, because essentially it's a square root of 61.8, I think, or something like that. Um, so, and this 124.60 level here. So, what needs to happen for me, I think, is for the the euro dollar needs to basically stay below these two levels here, or could, can squeeze all the here on the weekly. Let's take it down to the daily so we can actually see it. Needs to get back through that low there and that high there to squeeze higher. So once we, I think we could well get a move back to 
uh, mm -hmm. 60. Um, as long as we don't go below yesterday's lows at 123.65. Um, is there anything else that um, you guys would like Colin and myself to look at and run, off, run, our, run our eyes over in terms of markets to cover? Um, otherwise, Colin, is there anything you want to look at in particular? Could you just bring up the Canada 60, please, Michael? Canada 60, I can indeed. Let's just close that down, and that's there. Let's take a moment and talk about that. So we've had a uh, we've had a pretty steep sell-off here in the Canada 60. It has not come back as much as the U.S. indices. There is some room for catch-up. A lot of the reason that Canada's been down, it's been getting it's getting dragged by the big sell-off in the oil price and and the big sell-off in gold because uh, the Canada is more heavily weighted in materials and energy. So today we've got the uh, crude oil prices holding steady about 78.50, and uh, gold is up nine dollars an ounce to 11. 53. So we could see some interest in the miners, uh, and energy may continue to rebound. Uh, overall, the Canada jobs number was fairly positive. So I think here that you've got some resistance in it around 850. If you clear that, you could take a run at the 200-day moving average and that trend line Michael has marked in closer to 870. And if you look, it's in a channel 830 to 850 that also measures to 870. When we're traders and analysts, one thing we're always looking for is where do you see a cluster of indicators coming together? And where you do the stocks tend to, or markets can tend to get drawn towards those kind of numbers. So I've just rattled off three, a measured move, a moving average, an old trend line, and uh, all pointing towards one. So if you break the 850, your level of confidence is fairly reasonable that you could see uh, something like that, with your downside being a t tad above 830 where you've been finding support recently. Okay, Colin, we've been asked about Canada Yen. So what I'm going sure. to do is I'm just going to call that up and uh, we can look at that. So bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it always helps if I actually type it in correctly. Canada Yen. There we go. Let's close that. Whoa. I mean, basically, you're looking at overall yen. I mean, to be quite honest, I mean, now that looks absolutely ridiculous. Let's look, oh, look at this. This is wow. interesting. This is very interesting. That's right at the top of a channel, big channel. So we've taken out the 2013 highs. Let's see how, if we can go back any further. Alright, okay. Let's do Fibonacci retracements. 61.8 of that is, wow, that's a choppy old currency, isn't it? Uh, sure. 103.40. So let's just get rid of them because we're way through them now. And let's do 78.6. Okay. And let's put an oscillator on it. Not that it matters that much, it'll probably be well overbought anyway, so it's not really going to give us too many clues. But nonetheless, I think what we're seeing here is I think there's certainly potential for us to to break towards the 103.40 area if we sustain the break above the high that we saw in 2013, and it certainly does look to be the case. Um, have you got a different take on that, Colin? No, that looks pretty reasonable. That's a nice channel break out there. And even when we look at on this calendar, the the uh, 2013 high, that was a uh, more of this is a monthly. Okay, so this is yeah. this is within the shadow rather than a uh, on a monthly chart. So uh, and, and and well, you're well above the body. Actually, you've already broken it. Probably when you cleared 100. So uh, so here, if we look at this one back at 2013, you're already probably peaking above it if you look at the actual bodies, and uh, and you're, you're holding here. Your body of today's candle is above yesterday's candle a peak, so that's actually uh, quite encouraging. That's suggesting a real breakout, and there's no reason you couldn't retest that. Uh, that 103.40 there is looking pretty enticing at this point in uh, in time. And certainly, looking at looking at any sort of um, pullbacks on that, you're going to find a fair degree of support around about 99.80, simply because uh, it was the highs, um, it was the previous highs from the weeks in September, two weeks in September. So we've broken the September highs. 
the initial break higher um, last in October. Now we've consolidated above that. And that pretty much ties in with what we were talking about with respect to dollar yen. If we look at dollar yen, I think dollar, if you look at dollar yen, that will give you some fairly significant clues with respect to that particular chart. I'm going to go back to uh, the monthly chart again. Look at the initial move from 124.12, 124.15 in 2007, and the, the all-time lows at 75.60. We've broken through the 2008 highs there at 110.70. So that was a significant break. We've also broken through 112.60, which was those peaks um, in September, sorry, in October right there and now we're well above that so if I now drill that right down the likelihood is given how we've moved higher apart from one negative day there any pullbacks in dollar yen are likely to find support around about 112.60 but overall given the direction of travel with respect to monetary policy in Japan and the US we're really looking at 120 in the next three months so, yeah. so go on Oh, sorry, Mike. I just wanted to add, also corrobor corroborating on that, you could view this breakout uh, in the last week or so as a flag pattern, so that uh, those two big up candles being the first uh, part of the flag, the one-day consolidation as the, as the midway point in the flag, and, the and now we're into the second half of the flag pattern. And if you look at it that way, then you do measure up to pretty close to 119, 120. So again, we have a number of uh, indicators coming together to suggest the level that could be reached in, uh, in due course. No, we don't go straight up and straight down, but that's probably where it's, it may trend towards. No, I think what we've got to do first and foremost is take out one one fifteen sixty. We tried to take out the um, we tried to take out that high there, and we did make a marginal new high on that. If we look at the high there, is one fifteen fifty one. We've made a marginal new high at one fifteen fifty six. So you're looking at one fourteen sixty as the low. I think if you're going to be looking to looking at dollar yen, you pr and you're going to get a pullback. For the uptrend to remain intact, we've got to really stay above 114, 114 20, 30. Um, otherwise, yeah. we could get a bit of a pullback to around about 112.60. But overall, um, I'm not sure we've got the traction quite yet to go through 115.60. We could well next week. Um, Euro sliding. That's a very good. Yeah, it is sliding. You're right. Euro sliding back. Friedman hasn't said anything else, has he? So euro slipping back towards 115. So we've taken out we've taken out yesterday's lows. So we certainly didn't get back above 124.60. So that ended up wearing that. That didn't last very long. That didn't last very long, did it? So that doesn't bode well. So definitely got no, that one wrong. So yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, you know, if we get a rebound, then. I mean, overall, I still think it's going to 120. It's really how we get there, and I'm not comfortable selling it down here. Um, I've been asked about what do I think about the last talk of Mario Draghi. Is it possible that QE is ongoing? You know, I'm still of the opinion that the ECB can't do quantitative easing, sovereign bond buying. I just don't see how it can. Um, the political hurdles for it, I think, still remain very, very high. I still think it's very politically difficult for them to do. They can talk about it and they can jawbone the euro lower, but I don't think they can go, on, go in shock and awe and basically um, buy sovereign bonds. I think that's just going to be a step too far. So um, I am still stubbornly of the opinion that the ECB will not do full-blown QE and, and they certainly won't do it next, they certainly won't do it next month, as BNP Paribas are saying. So um, as I say, for me, um, I still think that um, there's potential for a short squeeze in euro dollar, um, and, I, and I haven't changed my mind about that. It's really just a question of whether or not um, we get a push down to rules around about 123, 123, 122.80 first. But overall, euro may be sliding, but I'm certainly not comfortable selling it down here. Anyone, anyone want to ask anything else before uh, we wrap this up? Because it's now 10 to 2, and, um, um, you know, unless anyone's got anything else they want to add, Colin and I will, uh, Colin and I will wrap this up. Just quickly check to make sure that um, no one else has asked 
Anything? No, 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 no. Any more questions? Being asked about Italy 40. <laughs> Do you want the short answer or the long answer on that? Um, the Italian market, I am not particularly optimistic about that. Again, it's similar to the other European markets. While it's below its long-term moving averages, it's going to be significant resistance below 20,000. I'm still looking to sell the rallies on that market. There's still an awful lot of what I would call um, uh, bad news that I don't think has been priced in there. So the banks aren't sorted out. Looking at this aggregation of resistance through here, um, I would certainly be reluctant to be um, overly long of Italian stocks below 19,800. Yeah, and even if you did manage to get a bounce, there's another cluster of resistance levels right in around 20,000 between the 50-day moving average, the round number, previous highs and lows, and uh, and so there you've got. You, if you if you did you, you're running if you get any kind of a rally, you're running into some pretty pretty significant headwinds on that one. All right. Okay, so that's the Italy chart. All right, ladies and gents, I'd like to thank you for your company. This month we'll be doing the same. We'll be doing this the same time same place next month. Colin and I also host a monthly webinar on Thursday. I think it's the 13th of November. Yeah. Um, so please feel free to sign up for that. That's in the, it's on the, you can find the link for that on the education section of our website. And basically we chat about chart setups, the, the most recent data of the week or the day, and where we think the markets are going next. It's, similar, it's, it's, it's along similar lines of this non-farm payrolls number. The only difference is, of course, that um, we are uh, not talking around a particular number or a particular data point. We're just talking in general terms about the markets. So thank you very much for coming along, ladies and gents, and um, hopefully we'll talk to you on the 13th of November. If not, we'll talk to you the first week in December. Absolutely. Have a great day trading, everyone. Cheers, guys. Thank you.